Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So it is Saturday, which means it is time for the weekly scripture reading. Uh, before I get into that real quickly, I wanted to mention, so this is the uh, Bible journal and schedule that I use. And I've been using this for several years. Every year they come out with an updated version with the new calendar and all that. The design is always different uh, as far as the cover goes. But I've had a lot of people who have asked about these. They just started taking pre-orders for the next one. Uh, they go from autumn to autumn and so they ship these out usually around the end of summer. If you would like to get one, I will put a link in the video description to where I purchased mine. I've already put my order in. And there is a discount code. You can save a little bit of money by using the discount code NEW YEAR. Um, and I'll put that in the video description down below as well. So before we get started, let's just thank the Lord for His Word. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth and the good news of salvation to your people Israel and to all people through your Son, Yeshua the Messiah, our Lord and Savior. Amen. All right, so we're going to begin in the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 6, verses 4 through chapter 7, verse 11. Pull out my glasses. <laughs> Six four to seven eleven, and the version of the Bible that I'm reading from again is the Tree of Life version. I have a link to this Bible, as well as the CJB. Those are the two that I use the most uh, in the video description down below. Chapter six, verse eleven. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign on your hand. They are to be frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and upon your gates. That is, that portion of scripture is called the Shema, If you, whenever you hear that. It begins with, Hear, O Israel, Shema, Israel. It means to hear and obey. Now when Adonai your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of goods that you did not fill, and cisterns dug that you did not dig, vineyards and olive trees you did not plant, and you eat and are full, then watch yourself so that you do not forget Adonai, who brought you out from the land of Egypt, from the house of slavery. You must fear Adonai your God and serve him, and swear by his name. You must not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. For Adonai your God in the midst of you is a jealous God. Otherwise the anger of Adonai your God will be kindled against you, and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You are not to test Adonai your God, as you tested him at Massa diligently keeping the mitzvot of Adonai your God and his testimonies and his statutes that he has commanded you. You are to do what is right and good in the sight of Adonai, so that it may go well with you, and you may go in and possess the good land that Adonai swore to your fathers, to drive out all your enemies from before you as Adonai has spoken. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, What are the testimonies, the statutes, and the ordinances that Adonai our God commanded you? Then you are to tell your son, We were slaves to Pharaoh in Egypt. Here comes the guineas. <laughs> and Adonai brought us out from Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, Adonai showed signs and wonders, great and terrible, on Egypt, on Pharaoh, and on all his house. Then he brought us out from there so that he might bring us in to give us the land that he swore to our fathers. Adonai commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear Adonai our God, for our good always, to keep us alive, and as is the case this day. It will be righteousness to us if we take care to do all his commandment before Adonai our God, just as he has commanded us. When Adonai your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drives out many nations before you, the Hittite, the Girgashite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, 
Seven nations more numerous and mightier than you, and Adonai your God gives them over to you, and you strike them down, then you are to utterly destroy them. You are to make no covenant with them and show no mercy to them. You are not to intermarry with them. You, do not, you are not to give your daughter to his son or take his daughter for your son. For he will turn your son away from following me to serve other gods. Then the anger of Adonai will be kindled against you, and he will swiftly destroy you. Instead, you are to deal with them like this. Tear down their altars, smash their pillars, cut down the Asherah poles, and burn their carved images with fire. For you are a holy people to Adonai your God. From all the peoples on the face of the earth, Adonai your God has chosen you to be his treasured people. It is not because you are more numerous than all the peoples that Adonai has set his love on you or chose you, for you are the least of all peoples. Rather, because of his love for you and his keeping the oath he swore to your fathers, Adonai brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that Adonai your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant kindness for a thousand generations for with those who love him and keep his mitzvot, but repays those who hate him to their face to annihilate them. He will not hesitate with him who hates him. He will repay him to his face. Therefore you are to keep the commandment, both the statutes and the ordinances, that I am commanding you today to do them. Next we're moving on to the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Verses 1 through 26. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak kindly to the heart of Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her warfare has ended, that her iniquity has been removed, for she has received from Adonai's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Adonai. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley will be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground will be a plain, and the rugged terrain smooth. The glory of Adonai will be revealed, and all flesh will see it together, for the mouth of Adonai has spoken. A voice is saying, Cry out. So I said, What shall I cry out? All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, for the breath of Adonai blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Get yourself up on a high mountain, you who bring good news to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, you who bring good news to Jerusalem. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Look, Adonai Elohim comes with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he tends his flock. He gathers the lambs in his arms, carries them in his bosom, and gently guides nursing ewes. Who has measured the waters in the palm of his hand, or measured out heaven with a span, or calculated the dust of the earth in a measure, or weighed the mountains in scales, or the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the Ruach Adonai? or instruct him as his counselor? With whom did he consult, and who instructed him? Who taught him in the path of justice, or taught him knowledge? Who informed him about the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and count as a speck of dust on the scales. Behold, the islands weigh as fine dust. Lebanon is not enough to burn, or its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. By him they are accounted null and void. To whom then will you liken God? To what likeness will you compare him? To an idol? A craftsman casts it, a goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions silver chains for it. One too poor for such an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He looks for a skilled craftsman to prepare him an idol that will not totter. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? He sits above the circle of the earth. Its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the skies like a curtain, spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He reduces princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth a confusion. Scarcely are they planted. Scarcely are they sown. Scarcely their stem takes root in the earth. Then he blows on them and they wither. 
and a storm carries them off as stubble. To whom then will you liken me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? The one who brings out their hosts by number. The one who calls them all by name. Because of his great strength and vast power, not one is missing. And lastly, we're going to turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. You know that you were redeemed from the futile way of life handed down from your ancestors, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood like that of a lamb without defect or spot, the blood of Messiah. He was chosen before the foundation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your trust and hope are in God. Now that you have purified your souls in obedience to the truth, leading to sincere brotherly love, love one another fervently from a pure heart. You have been born again, not from perishable seed, but but imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all humanity is like grass, and all is glory like a wildflower. The grass withers, and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was proclaimed as good news to you. That is it for today's scripture reading. You can get the entire week's reading schedule on my website, cosmopolitancornbread.com, and I will put a link to that in the video description down below. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that we have the ability to come before you, to call you Abba, Father, like children that we are. I thank you that you care for us. You care for every struggle that we go through, that you care for our outcome. I thank you, Father, that every step we take, you already know where it's going to go. I pray that you lead us this week as we walk, that every step is directed by you, that we don't become stiff-necked and want to go our own way. Help us to hear, Father, when you are leading us. Help us to hear as we read your word. Help us to see with your eyes and understand. Father, I pray for those who are needing healing. I pray, I pray for those with loved ones who do not have salvation, who do not know who you, who you are. I pray for their souls. Because we know, Father, that our time on this earth is fleeting and we don't know how many days we have left. And we don't want to waste an opportunity to seek your face and get closer to you. And the last thing we want is for our loved ones to reach their end and not know who you are. We pray for them, Father. We pray for doors to be opened, for words to be spoken, for people to be brought into their lives who can encourage them and, and turn their hearts to you, Father, and, and be that example. You tell us to be salt and light. Help us to do that, Father. Help us to be the salt and light that you want us to be so that we are not worthless and just thrown out to be trampled on. Help us to be strong in these days, Father. Help us to be steadfast and not move, standing firm on your word and firm on your truth, the truth. Go with us this week, Father, and help us to, to live our lives each day to be pleasing in your sight. In the name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. Have a great week. Shabbat Shalom.